Hello and welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I knew you were a trouble when you walked in. And I'm Gary, and today we're going to review and discuss Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li, which came out in 2009 from director Andre Bart... 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 <laughs> Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis for Street Fighter, The Legend of Chun-Li? Okay. We follow Chun-Li, played by Kristen Kriak from Smallville. Her father has been kidnapped by Bison, played by Neil McDonoghue. Chun-Li grows up to become a very famous concert pianist, but is given a secret scroll by the, I think it's the Spiderweb organization. And she is led to Bangkok so that she can hopefully catch up with Bison and rescue her father. Well, it's amazing that this film ever saw the light of day. <laughs> and for the longest period of time, I have avoided this film. Word of mouth came out and they said, avoid this film. It is the worst film ever made. And the final coffin in video game movie adaptations. This should end it as being the epitome of the worst of its kind. And for the longest time now, this film has remained buried. Until we decided to review it. Yeah. And interestingly, looking back, Jean-Claude Van Damme was actually on board to return to the Street Fighter franchise. Despite the fact that the first film was kind of critically panned. Uh, as the worst movie ever made. As the worst movie ever made. <laughs> fans of it really, really hated it. It was very colourful and very cheap and tacky. But somehow, fairly entertaining all the same. You know, and yeah. so it's understandable that it can become a guilty pleasure. And I know that there's a lot of Jean-Claude Van Damme fans still out there that still also enjoy that film. Yeah. Trashy as it may be. And so he was interested in coming back for the sequel. And believe it or not, most of the original actors from Street Fighter were going to reprise their roles. Except Kylie Minogue was going to get replaced with Holly Valance. Yeah. And so the studio just went, okay, you know what, no... No, we're gonna we're gonna shut that down, and we're gonna we're gonna concentrate on this story with Chun Li. Uh, hey, hey, Van Damme, do you you want to play a part in this? You want to play Garland? Van Damme just went, no, thank you, I'm I'm done. And so we have Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li, which is not a prequel or a sequel no. to the original Street Fighter, but its own entity, and it does feel like it's within its own different genre compared to the previous film, anyway. Channel. Yeah, this this film, like Gary said, you know, I think everybody's heard about it and avoided it, and like I said, word of mouth go around. It's got the tiniest, tiniest, fucking minuscule connection to the actual fucking lore of Street Fighter. Chun Li is seeking revenge on M Bison, who's done something to her dad. Killed and her dad or kidnapped it, you know. And, and that's in the game. That's why Chun-Li joins the tournament to hunt down Bison because of what happened to her father. But wasn't Chun-Li actually a member of the Interpol? Yes. Which do appear in this film. We'll get into that later. Yes. Yet yeah. we are given this amount of other backstory where yeah. she decided martial arts, it's a second hobby. My, my real passion is the, being a pianist. Yeah. And playing, she's playing the piano. And it's an amazing because she can play the piano without any of the keys on the piano moving. Yeah. It's and a, she uh, creates masterpieces. Oh god. <laughs> I love the I love the fact that you know, we get that whole narration at the beginning. I I don't mind narrations at the beginning, but it's when the narration carries on through the film and then you're like, right, are we reliving a memory and she's telling it to us now? Or are we actually in the film present day? Because it gets it gets really confusing. I, I, I kind of, the, the the voiceovers in the film are so awful oh. and they're so bland. And I was I just I didn't I was wondering whether the the voiceover work was done once the film was completed. Yeah, and I looked at it and went, hmm, we need to nothing fill this out. makes sense. Yeah, I know, Chris, Kirsten, Kristen, come and record this 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 audio and this will explain what you're doing. It, and it's so bland and so and so horrible. But life never turns out the way we expect. And when we moved to Hong Kong, everything changed. I couldn't help feeling like I was being led somewhere new. 
Was this mysterious scroll a message? Bison, the same man who took my father, was here in Bangkok. I'd never been so close and so far away. She, she, she's grown up with her father. They moved to Hong Kong and her father's obviously into martial arts and, you know, training with Wushu and all that kind of stuff. And so she decides, hey, I want to spend more time with my dad because he's such a busy businessman. I'm going to learn it as well. And so they spend all this great time with each other. But as a Street Fighter fan, you know, oh, hold on, that shit's going to go down and the dad's going to get killed off. No, 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 he doesn't. He gets kidnapped by Balrog, played by Michael Clark Duncan. Now, obviously, sadly, we, we lost Michael Clark Duncan a few, a, years, a few ago. years ago. And I always thought he was a really good actor, but there were just some parts that he was really great at doing. Green Mile yeah. is like the most obvious one. Uh, Bear in Armageddon's all right. He's the comical black guy, I suppose. He's so memorable in that film. Yeah, yeah. He's memorable because he's so big. But then it's like the director went, okay, Balrog, we need a big black man. Well, you know, I, I, I look at Balrog and I look at Michael Clark Duncan's performance in this and think, you would be great in the first Street Fighter. Yeah. Your tone of character does not fit the genre of Street Fighter 2. I was going to say, yeah, but yeah, but this Balrog is a lot better than the Balrog that was in Street Fighter 1 because the Balrog in Street Fighter 1 was just a cameraman. <laughs> he was a fucking cameraman. He wasn't... Don't get me... We've got to avoid Street Fighter 1 trying to connect it to Street Fighter 2. Okay. <laughs> Let's have a look at the continuity of Chun-Li from the beginning of this film to when she actually is being played by Kirsten Creek. And how less Asian... She becomes <laughs> as she grows older. Yeah. It's like how more American yeah. does she become? And let's just look at the other characters now, shall we? That are, are inspired from Capcom Street Fighter. And I say <laughs> Capcom Street Fighter because Capcom were the ones that took control over this film to make sure that it wasn't fucked up. Badly. <sighs> so Anne Bison is now Irish. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I can't is, he... <laughs> no, oh, is, is it just the fact that his Irish accent just keeps bleeding through while he's delivering these lines? Now, I understand that many of these territories overlap with neighborhoods that at this moment you consider to be your own. This is no longer true. The sooner you accept this, the better it'll be. If you took the really harsh fucking violent shit from this bison and mixed it with Raul Julia and his over-the-top megalomaniac impression from, from Street Fighter 1, <laughs> you'd have the best bison! <laughs> but you get half and half and you're like, for fuck's sake! It's very easy! He's a fucking crazy general who can fly across rooms killing people aimlessly! Does he do anything like that in this film? No. no. Yeah. Anyway, so we also have Vega, who happened to be one of my favourite Street Fighter characters. <laughs> and, you know, he, he they, they fucked up his his appearance in the last Street Fighter film. And uh, yeah, I've got to go on defence. I did like that one. You know, he had the tattoo. He had the claw. Okay, he, he had the good looks. He he had the looks, but I think, you know, they... The whole they, acting, yeah. They, you know, they, they, I think they, they employed a Native American actor yeah. to, to play the part when he's supposed to be Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. And like in this film, they hired Taboo, a member of the Black Eyed Peas, to, to play Vega for yeah. like two minutes of screen time oh, or God. like 20 seconds with the mask off. And the thing is, is that Vega is supposed to be really beautiful, and which is why he wears the mask to protect his face. Yeah. No wonder you wear a mask. I'd hide that face too. Yeah, you know, when you see this film, it's like, oh, we've got, we got Bison, Chun-Li, Balrog, Vega. Vega, really? Where's Vega? Oh, he's just dropped down. He's gone off camera. You hear the screams in the background of him killing a bunch of people, right? Okay, where's he again? Oh, now he's chasing Chun-Li. And she's taking him out. Oh, right, that's it. Bye, Vega. <laughs> and, you know, considering other characters get killed in this, it's such a lame... It's a lame death, if it this is a death. death. Yeah. Oh, you think this is over? No, I'm just getting started. Oh, 
Then we get Charlie Nash. Oh, Chris yeah. Klein. Right. For those of you who don't know who Charlie Nash is, back in the original Street Fighter 2, obviously when Chun Li was trying to get revenge on Bison for kidnapping her, for killing her dad, Guile was trying to get revenge on Bison because something had happened to his buddy from the Air Force, Charlie Nash. Now, if you've seen the original Street Fighter movie, you're like, hey, isn't that the guy who got turned into Blanca? Carlos Blanca. Charlie. In this one, Charlie Nash is a member of Interpol who has come to Bangkok so that he can take down Bison. For no other reason apart from, what does he say at one point? I've chased him around 11 continents. His name's Bison. I've tracked him through 11 major cities on four continents and never come close, not once. This guy walks through the raindrops and anybody that's against him is either dead or on their way. Now he's the last man standing. It's just some of the worst recorded dialogue in a film. And, you know, looking at Chris Klein, you know, he got his big break, really, with the American Pie films. Yeah, yeah. To which they subsequently wrote him out of, I think, when they realized that this guy can't do anything. Apart now, from be that one guy. Now, I've seen Chris Klein in a few independent movies where he can actually deal with some complicated emotional issues and, and convey them pretty well as an actor. It seems like he had a lobotomy before doing this film. Either that, or he was aware, self-aware, of what he was in and decided to ham it up to fucking 11 <laughs> yeah. and just turn this into the most cliched and trite, you know, buddy cop story we've ever seen. You just inherited a big problem. In a Street Fighter movie, yeah. where there's hardly any street fights. At all. Well, we do have a street fight, you know, and I was I was kind of counting the time of watching the film, waiting for a street fight. And lo and behold, we have Chun Li versus a mob of goons in the in the streets. <laughs> dude, dude, sorry. That's not a street fight. That, you know, the film's called Street Fighter. You're supposed to get two world class fighters together and get them to fight in an area. Okay. If you get Chun Li, who just beats the shit out of a bunch of fucking strangers. But at least it's in a back street. So oh it God. was a fight in a street. What? Well on that or on that on that thinking, then Chun Li fought the backstreet boys. <laughs> <laughs> well she does. And you know what? It is more like a choreographed dance as actors jump around all over the place yeah. on wire work and yeah. you know like some of the punches and kicks connect, but I, I don't. I'm not feeling any of it. Yeah. I'm not feeling the connections of these of the impact of these hits. No. And lo and behold, Chun Li takes them all down, and then she drops like a, a shelf unit on top of a guy, and then fucking collapses. Yeah. It was like you fainted. Yeah, like, well, I mean, okay. Leading up, I mean, obviously taking that bit out of context. Leading up to that point. Bison and, and his goons have already kidnapped Chun Li's father. She's become a pianist, and you know she's been given this secret scroll by this guy with a spider tattoo. And then she's travelled to Bangkok and lived on the streets for what seemed to be like a really fucking long time. And for was... me, it felt like it was one day that she was there, <laughs> yeah, and it was me, just it was like four montage, <laughs> montage, <laughs> montage of her walking. She walked like everywhere in these white fucking big boots. I'm like, you're gonna get robbed. You're gonna get robbed <laughs> on the streets of Bangkok for the, for your shoes. And I think obviously she was she she hadn't been sleeping a lot. She hadn't been eating a lot. And then she's obviously exerted all that energy to fight these these guys. Why didn't that come across in the film? I don't <laughs> know. I had to think of it afterwards. As you I was, were thinking this I film was... put my brain to sleep. Yeah, I know. I know. What I started to do with this movie was I started actually forgetting that it was a Street Fighter movie and seeing it as like one of those cheapy ham acted action movies. I actually thought that. I was like, you know, if you take Street Fighter out of this yeah, and replace all of, all of the names of the characters yeah, and yeah. you have just a really below average crime drama. Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's, that's what I kept doing. And then With it, some mixed martial arts in there. I'm yeah. hesitant to call it mixed martial arts. And then well. every now and again, I'd remember that it, she was called Chun-Li and he was called Bison and he was called Balrog. And then I'd be like, oh, oh fuck, yeah, that's what I'm doing. 
She then gets rescued. Yes. By but... Gen, who, if obviously is your, if you're a Street Fighter fan, um, Gen is like a really old master who has really no. I don't think he has any connection to Chun Li. I don't think he has any connection to anybody. He just turns up in the fight. Well, apparently he's the old friend of Bison because the two of them yeah. refer to each other as old friend at the end of this movie, despite them never seeing each other or talking about or referencing each other at all. Well, they have that. Yeah, they have that little history lesson toward, towards the end of the movie. We're, we're going to so, get somehow Robin Show, who plays Jen, seems to know all of his history. Yeah. So yeah, and of course. Robin Show. Robin, this, Robin Show. This is his fourth video game to movie adaptation. Fourth? Mortal Kombat. Yep. Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Yep. Dead or Alive. Yep. And ah, now yes. Street Fighter 2. Yeah, Street Fighter. You poor, poor man. He All he has to do is a Tekken movie. you got to do the Tekken movie. Then you got all of them on the top. You've got them all. I mean, <sighs> uh, but yeah, he Robin, Robin Show turns up and I mean, for me... Uh, it wasn't it? It wasn't even like he was the saving grace. I was hoping that he would be. Yeah, well, that's all I hoped as well. But then I remembered what his fucking acting was like in Mortal Kombat Annihilation and how he delivered Liu Kang in those films. I was like, you never got past Mortal Kombat One, did you? This whole old master fucking balo- the old the old master baloney doesn't work nowadays because the same shit happens. He takes this. It's like it's like the Yoda shit, isn't it? He takes this old, uh, this this angry young character, tells them that their anger isn't going to work, teaches them the way of calmness and zen and all and that stuff, and then almost rips her face off with a saw blade. Oh yeah, yeah, R- <laughs> almost, <laughs> almost gets blown up by a missile by Michael Clark Duncan. And how, the f- how did he fucking survive that? I mean. Really, and not only that, Michael Clark Duncan Balrock turns up, sends in his goon squad, yeah, and then goes, Yeah, fuck it, I'm gonna blow them all up. And all he succeeds in doing is killing his own goon squad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, god, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the meat, the meat of this film, if you really, if you really, really, really want to know, is Bison has constructed the Shadow Lu Shadow Law organization in Bangkok and has, <laughs> this is how much connected the Street Fighter it is, and has decided that he's going to kill off all the heads of the fucking crime families in this area and buy up the slums that are now cheap so that he can turn them into, I don't know, a fucking golf course or, or, or a hotel or something. Mainly because... Duh, he grew up on the slums and he hates them. And on top of that, isn't he trying to find his lost daughter? Yeah, yeah. His daughter Rose, who has no connection to him in the games. There are some storylines where maybe Rose, well, in, no, in the games, Rose is like a fortune teller, magical woman who senses great, great evil in Bison and wants to dispel it. And obviously they, they are constantly having fights and he takes over her body at one point and then she dispels him and then he comes back. And that's the thing. That's the thing about people keep getting wrong about Bison. Bison isn't just a man. He's like fucking pure evil in a form. If you've ever seen uh, Doomed Megalopolis, um, uh, which is a, a manga, a Japanese manga or, or Tokyo, the last Megalopolis, there's a guy in that who's like a fucking, he's literally the best bison you can get, full on suit, magic powers, all that kind of shit. That's the fucking guy, not some Irish descendant fucking businessman gangster who just wants to buy the slums and rescue his daughter. <sighs> to which we do, in a very graphic scene, see him fathering yeah birthing but yeah he 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 rips open his wife's belly inside an evil cave so that he can put the good side of his conscience into the baby (laughs) and so he can be pure evil what the fuck (laughs) <laughs> what was that did I just watch? I you know, it I came so far out of left field. I was just like, is that Bison's story? Really? Yeah. yeah no. In this film, yes. In the games, no. No. No, it's not Bison's fucking story. I don't think there's ever been a Street Fighter game where he ripped the belly out of his wife to get the baby. I, well, I mean... 
I gotta give it the, I, that was something that really surprised me about this film. There was a lot of gore. Do you think there's more gore in this Street Fighter movie than the previous Mortal Kombat? <laughs> oh hell yeah! There was more blood in it. There was more blood in this. Uh, I mean, one one of one of my favorite. Well, I wouldn't say favorite. One of my more memorable scenes is when. You know, Chun Li is obviously met up again, and and he's telling her that she, she has to obviously find Bison's henchmen or henchwomen. And there's this one woman who's obviously taking all the power from all the gang bosses and businessmen. And Chun Li follows her to this club, and they have this fight in the bathroom, which was really bad. That's after you have you know an extended dance sequence where oh, Chun Li sort of lures her on. Remind me of Tekken. Remember this dance sequence from Tekken? Yep, yeah. yep, we need filler. We need filler. And, you know, obviously, uh, Bison's henchwoman gives up all the information to Chun-Li and Chun-Li escapes. So the very next morning, we cut the Bison and Balrog fucking training. And you're like, hey, what's going on? And Bison, and Bison fucking hits this thing and blood splatters on his face. And it turns out he's fucking punching the woman. Cantana. He, Cantana, yeah. yeah. He's using her as a fucking punch bag. So, I mean, you know, what more else is so there? <laughs> we, we, we cut back to the Interpol, who are now being told they have orders. Orders from up high. We're off the case. What orders? Orders, Nash. Yeah. Um, you're yeah. off the case. Yeah. Orders? Yes, orders. From where? It doesn't matter, I guess. You know, Shadaloo, they run... Everything. They run Interpol, so we're off the case. But what does that mean? We're still on the case. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, it. this is what made me laugh. Was was Charlie Nash decides that obviously he's not gonna give up. He's not gonna give up taking Bison down. So he's gonna try and use all of his fucking leads and everything. And and amazingly comes across Chun Li or Chun Li hunts him down. One of the two. And the two of them are like, "Hey, we're after the same guy, so we've got to take him down." And he's like, "Yeah, okay." And then he contacts or or fucking Moon Bloodgood turns up. Up uh, actually. Before I get to that, but Moon Blood Good. I mean, yeah. I gotta say, I'll be honest. I kind of phased out. Yeah. Most of the times that she came on screen well, because boobs. You don't want to take it to this dance, detective. But you've never even seen me dance. <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. Um, um, I like the whole bit where she was getting off the bike. That was, that was cool. Because she gets off the bike and I'm like, damn, she looks good. And then Chris Klein turned up and I'm like, damn, you look bad. <laughs> you know? But yeah, towards the end of the movie, you know, Moon Blood Good turns up with the SWAT team. And I'm like, I thought you guys had no connections. You had no fallback fullback plan yeah you've got like an entire fucking SWAT team armed with assault rifles and fucking all the shit you need where the fuck did you steal that from and it's not very long before she takes a bullet anyway <laughs> and then she's kind of sat out for the rest of the film which just makes me look back at it and go why have this character they should have removed her and got charlie to meet up with chun li earlier and then those two would have gone on the case and that's how chun li would have joined interpol or uh, yeah, uh, Apparently, what? there are there are deleted scenes on the DVD which go into more detail as to how Chun Li and Charlie Nash actually would work with each other to resolve the end of this film. Oh God, fuck, fucking! Could God. you stomach ever watching an extended cut or you know deleted scenes from this film? <laughs> you you could you could, you could because I I realized this because you you would never watch this movie if you were a Street Fighter fan. I mean, well, you would. Because you have to say, as a Street Fighter fan, you have to say, I've watched it, I'm never going to watch it ever again. Jeez. You would never watch this film if you actually like really good martial arts movies. And I'm talking about the Raids and the Ong Baks and the fucking Jackie Chans and the Bruce Lees and the Jet Lees and the, the fucking, re the really good movies. You know, I realized who would watch this film? Young, young women. Young women would watch this film and I'm not being sex or anything. You can you can type in the internet how much of a dick I'm being or whatever. But literally I was sat there watching this film like I don't enjoy any of this film. But then, you know, 
If you're not a Street Fighter fan and you don't like violence and violent movies, who are you? You're you're a group of you're a group of young women who, after a long week at work, have gotten together with a couple of bottles of wine and some snacks and are flicking through Netflix looking for a film to watch and go, "What's this? Street Fighter: The Legend of Chun Li." Do you know who Chun Li is? No. Do you know what Street Fighter is? No. Oh, it's got some martial arts in. Well, I hope it's not too violent. You know, the women in this are your your. your I don't like to say it, but they are your strong, strong, independent women. Chun Li is out there looking for revenge. Moon Bloodgood doesn't want to be used as a sex slave by Chris Klein. You know, they all—all all the men are fucking assholes. Yeah, you know the women get sh the women get fucking shot at. They get grazes, grazes. These are fucking trained professional hitmen. They graze people. So I sat there and I was just like, that's. That's literally the only people I think would enjoy this film. <laughs> That's more people than I think would enjoy this film. <laughs> this film needs to remain buried. <laughs> Underneath <laughs> Mortal Kombat Annihilation, Street Fighter, Dead or Alive and Tekken. Never to resurface Doom. again. Yeah. <laughs> Just before the film's climax, of course, you have to have an explosion. <laughs> and I gave Mortal Kombat Annihilation some pretty serious shit for some awful... Awful special effects. That was bad. It was bad. This one rivals it. Which one? There was two. The, the explosion at the end when the SWAT team are there and Chris Klein comes running out going, BOMB! <laughs> oh god, yeah! <laughs> the, the effect is so bad that he is removed from the explosion altogether when we see the wide angle shot of the SWAT team ducking down and then we get this close up of Chris Klein flying across the screen behind this explosion. You would be burnt, incinerated and fucking dead. What I don't understand is he should have checked that room. We, we, we started the fucking scene with Chris Klein in that room with them with the fucking dock worker, you know? Oh, we're going to use this as our fucking observation post. Well, then check it. <laughs> check the room. Make sure there's no fucking booby traps in there. But no, Michael Clark Duncan and fucking M. Bison turn up. They're like, don't worry. I've got a plan. I stuck a little beeping red box and a black box underneath a table. They'll never see it. <laughs> well, they won't even hear it. They won't even <laughs> hear it. Because it fucking beeps. Beep, 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 beep. Bomb! And then, yeah, the fucking jump out. I mean, this special effect with the fucking bomb, uh, with the missile hitting the Gens yeah. hideout, that was just as bad as the explosion at the end of Demolition Man. You know? I, and do you know what really, really fucking pissed me off? I mean, like... I know, I know I've been quite calm for most of this review, but what really fucking pissed me off was the bit at the end where, you know, Chun Li's mum is dead, or died. Oh, yeah. I'm just gonna just go back yeah, to that yeah, as well. Yeah, okay. Apparently Chun Li's mum died because Balrog punched her in the head so hard he gave her brain cancer. I thought that! She got punched at the beginning and then all of a sudden she's got cancer. And I was like, I bet he's punched, I bet he does the story, but I didn't look it up. But then to add insult to injury, <laughs> Chun Li turns up to her mother's funeral wearing black, which is sacrilegious in a Chinese uh, culture. You wear white. Jesus. Yeah, but her mum was American. You know, it's not like honourable or anything. I don't fucking know. I'm not Chinese. I'm not. Anyway, yeah, fuck it. Right at the end of the movie, Chun Li's mum's dead. Chun Li's dad's dead. Bison's dead. In front of his daughter, which I thought was a bit harsh. Exactly. His like, head's fucking damn. His head's fucking She's spun around. She's traumatised. <laughs> She's traumatised. She had a traumatised life already. She's fucking really gone over now. But it's the part where fucking Chun Li fucking she's 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 gone somewhere. I think she went home or whatever. And Gen comes up to her going, Hey, Chun Li. It's like the last three minutes of the movie. So because it's called Street Fighter, I'm going to show you this little pamphlet of a Street Fighter fighting tournament. <laughs> you should enter it, Chun-Li, because there's a guy in there called Ryu. Who? Ryu something? Ryu. He's, he, he, he's, he's, he's like an arms dealer from the other film. Rue, yeah, yeah. <sighs> 
Ryu, yeah. He 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 could join our cause. He could help bring down the injustice. I'm like, right, Bison's already dead. So whoever's running this tournament, I I've I no fucking clue. Um, and you're you're just bringing Ryu now as a side character. Who's he's the fucking main star. We already had this in the other film. He is the main fucking star of the whole fucking Street Fighter franchise. But he's just a fucking side. I thought it was Guile. No, go <laughs> fucking stop it. Just stop it. <laughs> well, it, believe it or not, the studio did intend for there to be a sequel to this film, which was going to heavily feature Ryu and Ken as the main characters. Uh, also, I believe they were going to be recast. But of course, Legend of Chun Li did so well that no Street Fighter movie has been made by the studio or Capcom since. Yeah. But what really pissed me off was that end bit where Chun Li goes, Nah, I'm alright. I'm home. Maybe next time. I'm like, What the fuck? Seriously! I've just sat for an hour and fucking 20 minutes of a Street Fighter film with no fucking Street Fighter in it, and when the fucking Street Fighter shit turns up at the end, you don't want to fucking do it! Fuck! I do not have any favourite scenes in this film. There are, unfortunately, <laughs> some memorable sequences. And that's Moonblood God's boobs. <laughs> the continuity. I, I, uh, I'll be honest, I was watching her boobs and there's the continuity error on her cleavage or on her chest as the wet patches go from very small to very large back to very small again and back to very large again. Yes, I noticed. <laughs> but that's not the only continuity error that I picked up on. Um, when uh, uh, when Chun Li is rolled off the back of the truck, I think it is, yeah. and M Bison sort of stands on her arm, and yeah. all of the SWAT team are there, and they all point guns down. Yeah. The boom mic comes crashing in from the top of the screen, <laughs> and I was like, "Is that a gun? No, no, it couldn't have been coming in from that angle. That's just an obvious boom mic, which they still have not removed." Oh, I, I was very surprised. I did have a couple of good scenes they did make me note them down the the first scene i i did enjoy was the father fighting balrog and his henchmen at the beginning there was that really cool bit where i think he they were playing tug of war with the table yeah i know but there was it's not that bit in general i mean i know michael clark duncan there's a really fight. crappy effect where he hits the wine cork and it explodes the yeah, bottom of the bottle yeah, it's and the, really the, stupid the wine hits the guy you know and then it and then sets on fire sets which it wouldn't fire, do and then he oh, he puts God. the fire on the chain um, my favourite scene too, like I said, was I was very surprised about the gore in the film and when they had that head shot in the container after Moonblood Good turned up and it's the Last Supper. That was pretty good. I, I you know, first scene of blood I was I was very surprised of. I did partially like Gen sparring with Chun Li, you know, it's your old master with the young fighter kind of thing. You know the fighter's gonna lose, but it was the thumb grab I thought was pretty cool, you know, he's just like twisted it. And Bison using it, that female woman as punch bag gore again, I suppose. Just you know, just amplified how much of a dick he was. So no surprise really that I categorically do not recommend this film. With lazy performances, atrocious script writing, whether they even had one at all, fairly small fight sequences, which I don't even I don't even feel the impact. I think there was one impact in the entire film that I felt, and that was when Chun Li gets her foot stood on. That made me go, "Ow, that probably would have hurt." <laughs> the stiletto. The stiletto. <laughs> That's the only punch or kick in the film that made me wince. You know, in a street fighter film, I was expecting combatants. I was expecting showdowns. I was expecting a fight. Really? You know, <laughs> at least they chucked in Chung Lee's spin bird kick in haphazard, you know. That was a really bad scene. Did she even connect those any no, of those kicks no. at all? Or all of the goons just fall over from getting dizzy? Yeah. I have no idea. So, you know, and it's a surprise because the director for this film has such a great lineup of films that he was credited as the cinema photographer. 
Oh well, well there's something that, you know this the, the, the cinematography in the film. It okay. works. It, yeah, it works. The, but the, the direction, sky, yeah, the sky, the like pacing, the Bangkok, yeah, the background, the the markets. Oh, I like that little train bit. You know, the the train going down in between the markets, all the people at the pool. That stuff. That stuff really worked. Directing the actors, no. So no. it's the same thing that happened with Mortal Kombat Annihilation, where you take a really good cinema photographer and then go yeah. direct. Yeah. And that's the mess. Yeah. Same thing happened here, where they've got this really good cinema photographer who had also previously worked on Doom, the movie, tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. Avoid this film. Unless you are absolutely intoxicated, in which case you might derive some humour from the awfulness. But I dare to say that this film goes beyond that stage to just insultingly awful. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to recommend it. I don't. I don't give a shit. I'm fucking on camera. I'm gonna, I don't recommend it. I, I. If you're a Street Fighter fan, then you. Yeah, like Gary said, you probably own it because as a fan of any franchise or or as a big fan of anything, you will fucking own and eat up every fucking piece of shit that the people will fucking throw at you just because you like that fandom. I will always, always say that Street Fighter Two, the animated movie, is the fundamentally the best fucking street fire to fucking film movie ever fucking made and it it gets better and better the more times people make street fire films that are really fucking shit street or fighter movie one and street fire the legend of chun Li two whatever the fuck they're called are fucking really really bad really really bad but like we said if you take the secret of chun Li and get rid of all the fucking capcom street fire stuff you know, ignore the names, Balrog, Gen, Bison, Chun-Li, fucking Vega, ignore all that kind of stuff. You might get a haphazard fucking girls' night movie. The fighting choreography, it's not brilliant. It, actually, no, it's not even not brilliant. It's bad. It's yeah, yeah. It's bad, but I've got to give just a little bit of credence to, to the main actress, Christine Craig, for, for, for attempting attempting to do her own stunts. I mean, I never watched Smallville. There are many fucking reasons why I wa never watched Smallville. She was fucking in it. And then when P this film came out, people were surprised it was bad. Did you ever watch Smallville? This, you, she's one of the reasons. Fucking Bison's actor. His acting... He's been in Band of Brothers. He was really good in Band of Brothers. But his acting in this, it's like he's playing the Borg version of himself from Star <laughs> Trek First Contact. Michael Clark Duncan never, never did a better performance than the one he did in Green Mile. Every film people put him in, it was just like, we need a big black guy. That's it. I'm not being racist or anything. They just needed. They should have just fucking hired Mike Tyson that Balrog is fucking based on. He would have been better. Mike Tyson was really good in The Hangover. He'd have been fucking amazing in this. Taboo. Never grace a fucking film set ever again. Because you, you can't act. And even if you attempt to act, it doesn't come across very well. The director... Stop. Just stop making film to games or game to films. It doesn't work. You don't work. In Doom, you had no fucking backstory for your characters and made up a bunch of fucking shit that didn't fucking work. In this one, you had a really good background for the characters that you just fucking ignored. Capcom, just make your own fucking movies from now on, okay? And Chris Klein, Chris Klein, to go away, just just go away. Whatever independent ga films Gary says you start in, they couldn't have been that good because I've never seen them. And Moonbird, good. Wow. And you recommend? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for watching off the shelf reviews.
You just inherited a big problem. 